God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Good morning. This is Larry Johnson, pastor of Sunny Baptist Church. We're glad to be back with you this morning. And the sad part of it is, is the the virus has still got the doors of our church closed. Matter of fact, the state of Alabama has even gotten worse. But we need to pray one for another. We need to pray that God will move and and clear this stuff out. But I'm thankful that we still have a way to reach our church people and other people too. And I pray that you always remember how sunny Eve. It's a great place to go to church, great people. But I want you to, them to know that I love them and I'm willing to work with them any way that we possibly can to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before we get started, while you're turning over into John chapter number 19 and verse number 16, our Heavenly Father, as we come again, Lord, we thank you, our Father, for the time that you went to Calvary for us, or that you made it possible that we're able to get saved. And I pray, Lord Jesus, today, Lord, that you would bless wherever that there may be a person somewhere that needs to hear the word of God. I pray our Heavenly Father that they'd reach out and Lord Jesus Christ would take them by the hand and pull them closer to him. He, has, he said, all ye that labor and heavy laden, come unto me and I will give you rest. Go with us today. I will pray God that you just make it easy for us to say the words that you would have us to say. I pray you'd go with us now, Lord Jesus. I ask you, our Father, that you would meet wherever that anyone is meeting. In the name of you, we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. But in John chapter 16, or 19 and verse 16, I want to talk to you in between verse 16 and 24. I want to talk to you about three men that witnessed the crucifixion of Calvary and walked away. It's a pitiful story on two of them's part, but on one, he listened. But let's look at these verses of Scripture, what the Scripture has to say. It says, Then delivered he him, therefore unto them, to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him on either side, one and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. The title then read many of the Jews. For the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. I am, and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priests of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, which uh, within the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his raiment and made four parts, every soldier a part, and also his coat. Now the coat was woven without seam, woven uh, from the top to bottom. 
Now look at what it has to say here, how this coat looks like. The coat was without seam, woven from top to bottom. They said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rent it, but cast lots for it. Whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, they parted my raiment among them, for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. I would like for us to look at something here just for a few minutes. But let me say to you here, every detail of this crucifixion was laid out by God in correct order, the way that God wanted it to be. God laid it out there. And also Calvary uh, is one that uh, that needs to be seen. And also, or let me re, uh, re-clarify that. Calvary is one that need not to be used in his imagination to see it unless to uh, 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 likewise to a skull. Uh, I was trying to get this together to us to see that what God had laid out. A lot of times folks, people just looked at Calvary, just the mountain, the where the place that where that it was. But well, I want something I would like for you to know and to bring to your attention. In verse 20, the Bible tells us that there was three languages, the Hebrew, the Greek, and also the Latin. The, these languages was in the, wrote in the title, and it represented a great area of human life. God has got it worked out for every person in this entire universe to be able to understand what Calvary is all about. But these three, represented in three great areas of human life, it was a religion for the Hebrews, philosophy uh, for, uh, the, uh, the, uh, for, for the Greek, uh, and also for the Latin. The title spoke, or speaks, I should say, of a universal sin, now, stay with me for a minute. The title of this spoke for a universal sin. If you go back and you look and you'll find that in the Hebrew, they do not recognize that the Lord Jesus was the Lord Jesus Christ that was crucified. The Greek and also the Latin. In their culture and what they believe and what they come to understand. But when we look at this, we find that it was a universal sin. Uh, in all of this, we also find uh, these great uh, uh, groups of the world participated in his death. The religion, the culture, and also the law. The law is great, but it won't save you, my friend. But it didn't. It will not save not one person, not one lost person, will it save? It tastes the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But the title also, on another other hand, in this title also, it speaks of a universal love that God had laid out for mankind to understand and come and to, to come to know. And that universal love was where God so loved the world that he loved, that He gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That's that universal love that God lays out uh, that we might be able to know. And also it, 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 it speaks and it announces the salvation unto mankind. If mankind might understand that the Lord Jesus Christ has got this laid out as we read here in this book. As we look out and we see what the Lord's teaching you and I. And whenever we see the salvation for the whole world, 
not just for just uh, for, uh, for a physician uh, for some uh, and a physician for others. But we also look at this that for Christ, you see, is the wisdom of God. Christ is the wisdom of God. You must have the two. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It takes all three of them to work together in this. Excuse me. Whenever we look at this, we see that Christ is the wisdom of God to the Greek. When we oh, no, also notice this, the power of God uh, to uh, the Jews, the Hebrew, with uh, justice of God that fulfills uh, the law, the holy law, unto mankind. Whenever we also understand what God is uh, teaching us, is for us to understand, uh, uh, to know that what rep is represented. In this, uh, we find after 1,900 years, if you could go back, if you counted it, maybe longer or less, uh, that we find where the winds, the rains, all of these things had come place, uh, come up on for all these hundreds of years uh, that come up on the cross of, of Calvary or Mount Calvary. Uh, but whenever we look at it, it can still be seen as a skull. And that's all it is. It's just a skull. Here are not, not only how many people that were at Calvary that day, but it, we do not know uh, how many was there, but we do know that the city, uh, the city was very much alive. Whenever something like this is taking place, seems like everybody wants to gather around. I want to see what is going to happen. But the visitors from all over the world, how uh, that uh, today, uh, it was used, it looked at uh, as a high day, a great day in that day and time, uh, religiously speaking. You know, we have Sunday morning, or Sunday, first day of the week. It's a day that we come to worship, that we might lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's a great day for you and I, all of God's children, all, of, all people that wants to be uh, named into the family of God. But we, when we look at this, we also see, had the crowd been quiet, this crowd there at that city had been quiet, that they could have been able to hear every word that was spoken, everything that was, was spoken there on the cross of Calvary by these three men that was being hanged there. But the crowd wasn't that reverent. The crowd was loud and, and no telling what else. But I want to talk to you just a few minutes for the three that were there that brought him there to crucify him. And as they did, they, they knelt there at the, at the cross where all the Lord Jesus Christ was at, and there they cast lots for his uh, material things, things that he had very little of. And they cast lots for them. The first man in this hidden up possession uh, that he got was the coat. The coat. So unusual that it caught his attention. So unusual that it carried him away from what the Lord Jesus Christ was saying there at the cross of, uh, of Calvary. You know, that coat belonged to an unusual man, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, likely he had never seen a coat like this one. But all this been said, he evidently, he did. No doubt that he was proud. He was proud of what that, that he, he had in his he was taking the chance as he began to cast lots for it. And also, while he was taking that chance on this coat of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
He was missing the greatest opportunity in his life for salvation. An opportunity that would last forever and ever. He won the coat, but he lost much more than he had ever gained in his life. He lost more than he ever gained by in this walks of life. Jesus was here hanging on the cross of Calvary. Now, on this cross that, that day, the cross for about, he was on that cross for about six hours, from nine until three that afternoon, nine in the morning to three in the afternoon. While hanging there, he spoke seven times, but no one heard or appeared that. But also, when we look at this, we see here that uh, in that afternoon as he hung there, and he spoke these seven times. The soldiers were busy casting lots for his clothes, for the materials that he had. Probably did not, they probably did not hear uh, anything that was said. However, there was some that did, and, 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 the, and it come and then accepted Christ uh, as their Savior. But this soldier here had, his eyes was up on this coat, not on the Lord Jesus Christ. There's things going on in this world today that keeps individuals' lives off of the Lord Jesus Christ. It keeps people out of the church where they should go. I got, I got an excuse. I can't make it today. Maybe later. I don't feel good. So many things. I could go on and on and on. I'm not that way about just picking things. But I am here to tell you, my friend, that we need to open our eyes and our ears to be able to understand that we to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. God sent him here that he might be, that he may be the sacrifice for my salvation and for yours. But whenever we look at this, the words that Jesus had said would have brought salvation to this poor man's soul. He could have been saved. But he took chances on the garment instead of salvation. You know, over in the book of Romans, the Bible says this, God, in, in, in chapter 14, verse 11, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. You see, it teaches you and I and tells you and I all of this that's going to take place and the garments and the things that took place that day. There was another man, another man, the second man. Over in verse uh, number 34 in chapter 19, the Bible says this, said, but one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. Now let's look at this for just a minute. In verse uh, number 31, the Bible tells us that the Jews went to Pilate and they asked for him uh, to go and break the legs of the three crucified men that it may hasten uh, their time of life. Because the next day was going to be the high day, the great day that we talk about here as we talk about what the holy day is. But it wasn't to break the legs of those crucified men and their bodies to be taken down and carried away. They wanted this done. Now as they began to go to break the legs 
of these three men. And uh, there, that, as they did, uh, they didn't want them on, the, off on the, uh, the cross there on that high day. But when they had come to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. In John chapter 19, verse 36, it says, For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. Here is God lays it out to you and I that what God was teaching, they may crucify him, but they could not bone, break a bone in his body. It was not to be broken. All right here, as we look at this, we also see that now Jesus had said during his ministry, no man take my life from me but I lay it down of my own self. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. John chapter 10, verse 18. This is what the Lord Jesus said himself. Don't get it through your head that, that they had power over him, but not so. This was what was laid out. God had laid this out for this crucifixion. As I made the statement in the starting of this, that every detail about this crucifixion, I was clearly and surely laid out by God. Every detail of it, as we look at it. But the commandment, this commandment, excuse me, have I received of my Father, is what he said. Now, all the soldiers except one were satisfied. This is something that a lot of folks cannot understand. Neither am I. But I know that it was told in the Bible. It was told in the Bible. But one came up to the man on the middle cross. All the others, they were satisfied. And this man on the middle cross was already dead. So what more could uh, could be desired of them for it to be taken place? But here, one had the spear and pierced his side. What a cowardly act that we find out that it took place. That was the second man. Thank God for the third. The third man, well, let me let's read, read you a verse of scripture. In Mark chapter number 15, verse number 39, the Bible said, And when the centurion which stood over against him saw that he was so, and he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. He recognized him for what he was, who he was. This man had he had looked upon him. His face, he faced the Lord Jesus Christ with 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 the surety of the things that he had seen. It was with an unusual happening that it took place uh, in his life. The hand, ah. Uh, or should I say the last thing that had happened when he cried out, whenever he cried out? The centurion soldier declared truly this man was the Son of God. The spirit, in the spirit of all of this, the things that we've seen of the insults, uh, and the things that was brought out in this part of the cross that was said, he shall believe. You know, whenever we understand that he will, be, that for people to believe of the Lord Jesus Christ. In 15, Mark 15 and 37 says, And Jesus cried with a loud voice, and he gave up the ghost. 
whenever they came to them uh, and they chose not all except one to break his legs. They were not to do that. My friend, today, whenever we look around and we see uh, and when we read the scriptures, as the Bible teaches us, it said in verse 21 out of uh, John 19 and 16, or chapter 19, verse number 21, the Bible tells us this is then, said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, right? Not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. See, here is the chief priest. He should have been a man that was there to stand and to say, let it be known who he is. Tell the world who that he is, that he come to die for our sins. But they wanted it to be hid. They didn't want him to be known as our Savior. He didn't want it to be him to be known that he brings the salvation that will save our soul and we'll have the opportunity to go to glory land. They didn't want it to be known, my friend, that how that the Lord Jesus Christ can walk with us day in and day out. I'm so thankful today that he lives in my heart and also in my life. I pray that the Lord God has touched you in some way. I pray that he's touched your life in a way that you'll never live the same as you did before. You always become, become different whenever Christ comes into your heart and your life. Think about it. This great time of our life as we come to recognize, to understand what the Lord Jesus Christ is all about. Some folks say, well, I'm just going to wait a while. Just how long are you going to wait? Just how much longer are you going to wait? How much longer are you going to tell people that? One day it's going to be too, too quick. It will be the last thing that you'll ever have. The last thing that you'll ever even speak of. My friend, this morning, wherever you at, if you don't have Jesus in your heart and your life, I would pray that you would reach out to him and let him reach out to you. Come, all ye are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. You'll hear me say that a lot. The Lord Jesus Christ came that we might have salvation. He came and he died for my sins, your sins, for all of us. We have that salvation. I pray God will bless you. Our Father, as we come now, Lord, we ask that you might touch somebody, someone's life somewhere. I ask you, our Heavenly Father, that they may understand how precious that it is of the salvation that you give for us, that we might be able to live for you. And when we die from this world, that we know that we, we have that new home that you said you'd go and prepare for us. You said in John chapter 14, you said, if I go, I'll go and prepare a place for you, and I'll come again. To receive you unto myself, where I am, you will be there also. I ask God today that someone's heart may be touched. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord touch your life as you go through this next week. And I trust and pray that you'll survive this virus that is so closely closing in. And I'm asking God that he might watch over you, he may touch you and touch your life. We thank you for being with us. Come to Sunday Eve whenever ah, the doors can be opened back up and come and be with us. We'd be thrilled to have you. May the Lord bless you is our prayer. Amen. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen.